Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm with Tumblers in the Making and today, finally, and I mean finally, I will get to show you guys the second part of the butterfly tumbler. So I apologize if it's taken this long. I've had a lot of um, updates that I needed to do on my programs as well as my computer. As Apple will call it, it is an antique. Hmm. Hmm. Apple. Has Apple called it an antique? Like really? But that my iMac was an antique. I had to update my iMac is that it's a 2012 iMac. My computer is not an antique. Antique. Well, it's a th 2012, you know, iMac, which is fine. Now I updated my iMac and I had to learn a whole new program. It's called Flomora 10. But anyways, uh, so let's get started with that. And again, I apologize. I am going to upgrade a little bit more stuff as well. So that way you guys can see the clarity of what I do and how I do it. So for right now, let's get started. Oh, and one more thing at the end of every video that I make, I will end up showing some artwork from different uh, group members uh, that they created. And uh, I appreciate everything that everyone has done to make tumblers in the making possible. Thank you. I apologize everyone, I forgot to go ahead and adjust the camera onto my project area. But just so that you know, I'll be changing from voiceover to original voice on the recorder. So that way you can hear in details what I was doing at the time. And I've already placed pencil marks of how straight it should be and centered. So I did that at the bottom as well to make sure it is centered. And how did I get it centered? All right, so usually you grab a piece of paper, you place the paper over, you place the cup over the paper. You grab a pencil, you make a round circle out of it, and then you cut it as, as perfectly as you can. And then you fold it, okay? You fold it in half, and then you're gonna fold it again perfectly. And then you have this, you have a map. You have a map to take care of your tumbler. So once you place it on there, you see your crease, you're gonna go with that crease, okay? And then you blotch it here. You go ahead and make your crease, your uh, pencil marks there. Now the top, I used something a little bit more different. I used a, a ruler. Now this ruler is slightly rounded. You see that? I guess it's square, but on the top it's like round, it feels round. And this lays on your cup perfectly. Like it's weird, it, it'll actually do your straight line for you anyways. So it's not, you try to tilt it a little way and it won't, it just kind of, you can feel it's not on there at all. So this is how I center mine and this is how I know where the line should, needs, to, needs to go. And then I have a perfect, perfect uh, opposite line. For this project also, just as a reminder, that I spray paint half of the tumbler, half pink and half white, uh, straight down the middle. I prefer that you guys, in the future, just, or for my future, just go ahead and spray paint the base coat all one color so it's not so difficult. Because I did had, I did actually have difficulties uh, with the glitter part, it was showing through. So try to do it all in one color. Also, I went ahead and did two cuts of the vinyl already. I used cheap vinyl because it needed to be removed so I didn't want any permanent expensive vinyl on here. You can also use regular removable vinyl but I would suggest either way as long as you understand it is not going to be stuck on there. <laughs> it's going to be removed so use removable vinyl either the cheap kind or a little slightly expensive kind. But this is going to be three separate colors. You're gonna have your decal, then you're gonna have on the opposite end, I'm gonna do it all white in glitter, and then I'm gonna do uh, the purple and pink on the side that's open. 
So we're gonna see how that turns out. It, I'm kind of nervous. I want it perfect. So here's my cheap vinyl. That's my cheap vinyl. And it comes out just like that. I made sure I, uh, I put it under vinyl cut and I put more. You know how it says less, normal, and more on the settings? I put more because I want it to cut straight through. All right, so here's my lines here that I've already used markings on. And now to remove this, let me show you guys a, uh, a little tip. All right, so you want to use either the extra vinyls that you've used that's super sticky and adheres, or you can use regular tape. And all you gotta do is just make sure you flatten it and then you separate it just like that and it comes off super easy. I don't know if it's from old age, but I do know that the older I'm getting, the more shakiness I'm getting. All right, so you guys keep in mind that this cheap vinyl isn't going to stick very well to the cup. It will not. It will lift and it will come up. Now place your second decal on the opposite end and make sure it's aligned perfectly. And then I place this here, just like that. And then this will be white, white glitter. And the person's name is coming straight down. And then this will be ombre in pink and purple, as well as for this side pink and purple. Now I found this artwork and that was going to be my centerpiece. So I went ahead and printed it on printable, printable vinyl. You'll have to do research and see which printable vinyl is actually good for you or it suits you. For me, I'm still testing those out. Now we get our Mod Podge out. I place it in a separate container so I don't contaminate my bottle of Mod Podge. Or if you do do that, you're going to have glitter mixed into your bottle and then it'll transfer over to another tumbler. So get your container, get your brushes that you feel more comfortable with. All right, so since I know my decal is not a permanent adhesive, it's a cheap type of adhesive. If I push this in, it's gonna go underneath this vinyl. So I'm going to do outwards and I need to do it quickly, super fast. And if you guys wanna use permanent vinyl, that's fine too. But keep in mind that you'll need to remove it once you're done. All right, let's do our glitter. Now the colors that I used on the glitter for this cup is going to be Barbie, and I believe not 100% sure, but I think I got that from Glitzy Glam. Uh, Nebula um, is a purple color, and I got that from Simple Glitterishes, and the Ice Opal also from Simple Glitterishes. Uh, these colors are absolutely beautiful, and I'll have that description or short link down below. Now, one of the hard things that I found on this was, well, not too hard, is the decal was lifting slightly. And I wanted to put my finger to hold it down, but neither did I realize that some of the, uh, some of the Mod Podge came underneath it and held it after a few minutes. It actually held it down. So I was happy about that, but it was a little difficult to lift uh, the decal off. 
Now there are some spots that I've missed with the Mod Podge and that's okay. I just went ahead and re-Mod Podged it after a second layer, which you will see eventually. I re-glittered everything and it came out perfect. It, it actually covered it up. I'm having so much fun adding this glitter on here and I'm not too worried about the different, the differential of the glitter and the, uh, the base color of the of the tumbler so you guys be patient I sometimes the Mod Podge is so clear you can't really tell what you Mod Podge if you hit it at the right angle the right lighting so make sure you only do half of the tumbler not all of the all right tumbler. so I gotta kind of do this upside down because I don't want this color mixing in with the purple just yet it's like ombre guys ombre think of ombre And now the little bit that fell on the paper, I'm actually going to use that for the middle. So this mix, I'm going to try and see if I can put it in the middle. And then I can use that later for a mold or something. I don't want to use too much either. All right, there we go. And now I need to do the mix. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I did not want to mix these two colors in. I was devastated that I did that, but then I thought about it, I was like, wait, I need a mix for in order for me to create the ombre. So then I said, okay, maybe it is a good idea. I still needed to add more pink into that purple, um, but it came out great. I kept mixing and kept rubbing in and it came out great. Now, don't get discouraged if you did not brush on your Mod Podge all the way through, um, like I did. Again, on your second round, which we will end up doing a second round of glitter, we're gonna re-Mod Podge it, and this time we're definitely gonna be able to see where we Mod Podged, because the base is not so white. Now, keep in mind that when you do this, be patient, don't rush it and get your ombre looking really, really good. Now in this part, I'm going to re -mod podge the, the glitter that's already placed on my tumbler. Of course, we need to redo everything because I did not do a very good job of mod podging it the first time. So one thing I would suggest is if we're doing half on one side, we should do the other half on the other side of this tumbler just to cut time. So when you glitter it and everything falls on the paper, you'll be doing both sides and you don't have to be kind of replacing your excess glitter back into your container over and over and over. So do both sides. This purple came out so beautiful. Oh my God, it is so glitz and glam. Like it sparkles really, really well. So darker was so much better. Um, you can still see a little bit of the lightness, but again, I'm not too worried about it because we're gonna put a gold decal around it. So we're not gonna be able to see it. Now we're gonna do the pink side and the pink side is going to be the same way and at the beginning of your tumbler project if you want to do both sides at the same time to save time that's fine i think you should go that way into that route make it a little thicker but i don't want too much glitter on here either remember that because i want my decal once you lay that epoxy on there you want it as flat to the sticker paper get it as close as you can I'm trying to hurry up. I am rushing here. And remember, don't leave any lines, no clumps of your Mod Podge. All right, so my paper is, all right, it's clean. Here we go. I am not going to shake off this glitter because I don't want the purple to fall in my thing. That's it. That's all I'm shaking. I am not trying to ruin my glitter with some purple in it. Even though it does, it has it's a color shift on this pink. 
So it, when you tilt it a certain way, it does look like it has purple anyways. All right, now I can go ahead and let it go. All right, and I need to get this ombre real quick. Here's my mix. I'm gonna grab my paper that's already mixed. It actually needs a little bit of pink. And it's gonna fall off. Most of this won't stick. But I need that ombre to really, really look good. Because I am, let me hold it at an angle. Just like that, I want it to fall. Another thing I wanted to point out that I didn't mention is the ombre. When you watch your ombre and you feel that it does not look right, one side has more purple than the other side, or if you do the tilted method of ombre, uh, meaning when you tilt your cup to a certain angle while you sprinkle one part of your glitter downwards and the other side uh, you tilt your cup upwards and then the glitter falls on the opposite end. You can do that type of ombre, but it's not gonna look like it's ombre until you remove your vinyl. Then you see the ombre actually come out really, really pretty. So don't get frustrated if the ombre isn't perfect. All right, finally, I finished both sides and I did my ombre. And even though I've had to do that ombre like 20 times, God knows how many times I had to redo this ombre with multi colors of either pink or purple or mixed or both. Um, it came out great. I love the way it came out. Um, again, it's gonna look like it's not ombre correctly, but once you remove that decal, you're going to really reveal what the ombre looks like. Now everything is done. You put on your glitter, you love the way your ombre looks, let's go ahead and seal it. So that way the colors of your glitters doesn't shift from one place to another. So I use the Rust-Oleum 2X Gloss Clear Spray and you can use pretty much anything um, as long as it stays, um, make sure that your colors stay in one place and not shift all over the place. Um, so I would suggest to do about three coats. Make sure they're not super heavy coats because the more heavy coats that you add onto your glitter will come out dull eventually. So don't spray too much. Give it even coats and let it breathe. Let it dry for about, mm, I say about 30 minutes. I say a good 30 minutes. 30 minutes for every session. All right, so I've already sealed my cup twice with Rust-Oleum and now I'll be using the Quick Coat. And this I'll be using again, like I did with the Mod Podge, place it in a small container so that way I don't, just in case, because you never know, there might still be glitter loose onto the cup. So I don't want to mix any type of glitter into my Quick Coat. Um, and this will make sure that nothing is going to, um, move on the glitter part, move anywhere. Um, now I went a little heavy on here. I should have used my finger only and I didn't do that. There was a slight leakage, meaning as I was placing it upwards 
and letting it dry, I noticed there was a drip and I didn't like that. So I know I put way too much on a certain spot. So be very careful when you're playing with Quick Coat or you don't have to use Quick Coat. You can use three, uh, three times on the Rust-Oleum uh, and that should do, that should work just fine. All right, my cup is dry. I waited 45 minutes to an hour and now we're gonna use our X-Acto knife and our weed eating tool. Now, as you can see, I am going underneath and I'm pulling lightly. Um, I'm going in fast motion, but I am doing it lightly. I wanna make sure that it's not stretching the glitter and then pulling a big chunk off of the cup. So that's the one thing you wanna concentrate. If you feel that there is some that kind of tore um, off slightly or stretched it, push it back in. I want you to grab your X-Acto knife and flatten it against the wall of your design. So that way it looks cohesive. It's very straight. It's exactly as it should when you place that other uh, decal, the main decal that goes in that center. So try to avoid pulling on your glitter and use your X-Acto knife as much as you need to. All right, so we're gonna do the opposite end, which I'm dying to remove the decal at this point because I wanna see the reveal of the design. Now, I did have a difficult time because I accidentally placed some Mod Podge underneath the decal, so it got stuck. And um, I wanna go slow um, in normal speed so you can see what I did in case this happens to you where you get Mod Podge underneath it on your removable vinyl you can still remove it. Um, it's gonna hurt your glitter in some aspects, but you can fix that. And what I thought about it, what I actually thought at this time is that I'm going to place an outer uh, line decal on this. So there's gonna be strip uh, around it. So I wasn't too worried on the outer line. Uh, it's gonna cover it up. So don't sweat it too much. It's going to be covered up. Now remember, we don't wanna to pull too much on the glitter. So use your X-Acto knife as much as possible and try to cut through. So you can lessen the damage on your glitter and the Mod Podge, because it's gonna be difficult to try and, and fix it. But again, we're going to cover it up. All right, so I am going to totally focus on what you guys need to see, okay? Right here. Do you see where it's kind of out? That you need to push in or you need to cut straight through. Um, try not to pull away too much like I did here where I thought it may have been a good idea to remove some of that glitter. Maybe it wasn't straight enough. I wasn't eyeing that line and so I was pulling away, which I shouldn't have done. I should have pushed it against the wall and then flatten it just the way I did there. And again, just push towards the wall of your glitter and try not to remove too much from it. But you learn every step of the way. Anytime you make a mistake, you learn. And this is something I don't want you guys to get too discouraged. Again, we're going to go ahead and add a, de uh, a, a line of a decal around it. So don't worry about it. Now, don't forget to clean that rim. We definitely need to use our X-Acto knife and cut the rim around the rim so we don't have anything attached. Now, I wanted to show you the cup as well before we go into the next step. Look at the ombre. Look how pretty that looks. Once you remove it, it shows. Like, nothing to stress about. Okay, guys, let's do the next step, which I'm so excited to do. Now you need your Mod Podge, get your brush, a small container, pour your Mod Podge inside the container. All right, and here's the ice opal I was telling you about previously with simple um, glitterishes. I mean, look how pretty that is, that is so cute. And you can also do a tacket method with this, it comes out awesome. So definitely need to check that out. All right, so when you take your brush and you dip it into the Mod Podge, you want to brush slowly and carefully, even though we need to hurry up before the Mod Podge dries. We already know how fast it dries. So be very careful on those edges. 
push against it, slide next to it, anything, but do not get any glitter on top of your ombre um, because it's just going to mix in there. Even though it's a beautiful color, um, it'll probably go pretty, pretty well with the other two colors, but I prefer not to do that. I didn't want to take that risk. So just push along very simply, get the middle section, and then once you're done, lay your glitter on there. And I can already tell that the wall of your ombre, the pink and the purple, is higher than this fine cut uh, single glitter color. So I will, I will need to go ahead and add another layer of uh, the opal. But look how pretty that looks. Now remember when I told you about the spray paint when you do your base coat? Do not do two separate colors. Look, you can tell right there in that edge the different colors. So just use one single color. All right, so I'm gonna touch it up just a little bit with some Mod Podge and re-glitter on the, only the edges. Um, even though I am going to re-glitter this whole entire area um, just so I can get rid of that ombre that I did on that base coat I really wish I just stuck with one whole color all right so I'm going to show you some of the colors that I feel that you can use if you have it already on your shelf which is uh, glitter chimps mother of pearls this will look so pretty against that tumbler uh, right next to my ice opal with simple uh, glitterishes. And then we have, of course, more of simple glitterishes with their white diamond dust. That one's also super pretty on the tumbler. Just letting you guys know, I am not promoting any glitters. I, these are just the ones that I have on my shelf. All right, now we're going to real quick show you that I am re -mod podging everything and adding my glitter. And I was going a little fast here when I went overboard on the glitter, so make sure that you wipe any excess that you may have accidentally placed Mod Podge over your glitter. Because remember, once you glitter it, it will adhere to the glitter that you don't want it to be on top of. And have you noticed that since I've added the second layer of glitter um, on my ice opal, it actually covered up my ombre, that pad ombre, <laughs> and it made it into one flat surface against the wall of your ombre um, glitter color. So it looks good. It's really, really good. Make sure you brush off any excess. I would suggest to go ahead and spray, give it another Rust-Oleum 2X uh, clear gloss spray paint, uh, just to kind of keep it keep the colors still. Um, it, but don't go over doing it because then you have a big blotch. Now we're going to set up with our main focal point of our decal, which is the printed, the printable vinyl. And this beautiful um, butterfly I saw and I just had to have it. Um, and it looks really, really well with the two colors that I placed on here. Now, as you can see, I am rubbing along the edges. It kind of looks like glitter may have pushed a little bit inwards, which is fine. You may end up having that problem. So use your nails, use your X-Acto knife, push against the wall really, really good. If you need to cut slightly on the paper, you may do that. I didn't do that. I just decided to push against it. Um, my X-Acto knife, same thing. I was rubbing all against it, making sure you're gonna have that indentation from your ombre wall um, to where your decal is at. But just keep pushing on it. I promise you, it's at the end of the day, it's not gonna be noticeable. Oh my goodness, guys. Look how beautiful this came out. I should cry right now. It's so pretty. I want to keep this for myself, actually. <laughs> uh, but I, I can't. <laughs> but it's beautiful. I love it. And it is beautiful, but 
Of course, I'm not too happy with this uh, ombre on the base coat that I did. So I'm going to have to redo that. <laughs> of course, a never ending process. So I'm thinking it's like almost done. So I'm just going to do another splash of Mod Podge to try and cover up that ombre. I want this customer to be really, really happy with her cup and hit it with another beautiful color of op ice opal. Now remember, you guys don't have to do this. This is just me. This is why your base coat should be all one color. Now that everything is said and done, I finished it. It looks great. I'm gonna hit it with the Rust-Oleum 2X Clear Gloss, which is already on this cup. Look how shiny and pretty that looks. I usually would use the matte because it seems to repel my epoxy, but you guys can use whichever you want. So I decided to go ahead and help you guys by just moving it along and I've already epoxy the cup and I added two layers of epoxy. I let it cure for about a day and a half and I started sanding my heart away. Um, I should have removed the pool noodle. I, I don't think I was realizing that the pool noodle was there because it kind of blended in. <laughs> it did blend it in. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that this pool noodle's part of the cup. <laughs> but um, you guys make sure you get the rim of your cup Use your X-Acto knife and clean around that rim and then go ahead and use your um, your um, sand block and I used a 220 grit to a 320 grit and that works as well too. So just sand away, make sure it's nice and smooth. All right guys, now once you're done, make sure you clean your cup thoroughly. And what I mean by that is that you're gonna use your Dawn soap, you're gonna hose your cup off, but there's gonna be particles still left on your cup. So make sure that you use a sponge, clean it off with your sponge. Um, because the epoxy or anything you sand, even if it's wood, it once it gets wet, it clumps up and sometimes gets stuck to your tumbler and it'll leave little, little bumps onto it. Um, once you're done with that, use, put it back on your rack, use your car sham, and that will help speed up the process on the drying time. Uh, you still want to wait a few more minutes for it to thoroughly dry, but you can also cut your car sham in half and use one to dry and the other one to dry uh, or wipe off on any particles or any dust, anything that'll land on your cup, because it's a magnet, it's going to happen. So use your dry part of your car sham to wipe off any dust particles. That way you have less problems with your epoxy later. All right, so I use about three, uh, I'm sorry, five milliliters of epoxy. And I did a extra coat after the sanding because I've noticed there were bumps on where I'm gonna place my name decal. Um, and that was something I didn't want. You guys should not have any bumps whatsoever. I've seen some tumblers that there was still bumps after sanding and they placed their, their decal on it and you could see the bumps on that, uh, on that vinyl. So try to make it as smooth as possible. If you still feel bumps and you're scared to uh, sand down your glitter, then epoxy it. It's not gonna hurt, just epoxy it over. Trust me, it's gonna be perfect. So I did that and then I used my torch, um, a little kitchen torch, and I torched it. I waited about seven minutes and then I came back to it and I started kind of using a gun motion, I guess it's not gun motion, but just kind of popping motion like a, a, a gun, like a regular gun. Um, I noticed there were some bubbles that were rising to the top. So I kind of heat, the heat from the torch actually pops them super easily. Um, so I just pop, pop, pop real fast but you gotta stay away from your epoxy or it's gonna leave fish eyes. So keep away from it, but I promise you, you'll notice that if you use that torch and you step away and you just give it a gun motion, just pop, 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 you'll see that it actually pops your, your bubbles. Unfortunately, there has to be a part three, but I want you guys to stay tuned because our group members wanted to share their creativity with you. So thank you for watching.